What's going on, y'all? Little Unk back in another reaction. Y'all see the title, man. Let's get to it. People are saying the Spurs are ruining their number one pick. Everyone expected him to win Rookie of the Year, maybe All-Star. Now he's barely in the conversation. Jaime Jaquez is getting more love. But are the haters right? I mean, losing games is bad enough, but fans noticed the Wimby problem from day one. He is wide open with small Kyrie guarding, but Doug McDermott doesn't even see him. Passes to Malachi Branham, so Wimby runs out, but can't get a look. But late in the I game, Luka talk. loses Wimby on defense, but Jeremy Sohan passes elsewhere. It's a turnover. Then, last chance for something. Wimby breaks free. Zach Collins puts the game in Vassell's hands, who gets blocked. He didn't touch the ball the last three minutes of the game. By late December, the Spurs were 4-24. Two wins better than the Pistons, and everyone started to notice. Ooh, they missed a lot yeah, of Wimby. They're looking for Wimby on the Pistons. Yeah, that was a terrible miss. I don't know how you miss a 7-4 guy. Now, how do you exactly I, I just not don't see understand that. Man, it's almost like the, his team is reluctant to go. I was watching some flight reaction reactions, too. He was saying this as well. If flight catches it, you know it's bad. Um, I've seen some other other credible analysts <laughs> saying, um, say something on this topic, you know. And it's, it's, it's nasty. That's nasty. That, that. Analysts, fans, even have to say say something to to get the, this guy's teammates to realize that yo, you got a, a one in a lifetime generational talent. <laughs> Shout out to Flight on your team right now. You gotta give him the rock, give him the ball, let him shine. You know, I don't know if it's something they seen in practice. You know, they're like, nah, I think I can do better than he could do. You know, but. It, is there a reason they're not giving him the ball? Like, I don't know, man. I'm going to have to watch some Spurs games, see if they start to change that up. But, yeah, that's nasty. You know it's bad when the other team's broadcast calls you out. But most of the hate is reserved for Jeremy Sohan. Greg Popovich decided to play him out of position at point guard. But the experiment was so bad, People blame Sohan for everything. Jeremy had to post hating and harassing on Christmas Day as madness. Sad people. I hope y'all find love somewhere you need it. Feel bad for y'all. Now, I thought that people... And you know with this social media era, I know these, uh, 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 all these NBA players are seeing what the fans and what the, what the general narrative is, you know? I'll let, you know, you got those one, those, you know what I'm saying? few that are gonna stay off the internet like totally but most of them you know what i'm saying like 90 percent of them they gonna see every little bit of what the fans got to say what the analysts got to say and that affects their game so it's definitely i definitely think they're gonna start giving them giving him the ball now you know they don't want to be looking like like they gatekeeping the rock from him you know what i'm saying that's just would come to back up Jeremy. But no, the top reply was, learn how to pass the ball to your wide open 7-5 center. You hate on LeBron's greatness every day for no reason. Take your own advice. Damn, it is personal. But Jeremy did bring this on himself. Before Jeremy even played a game, he played word association with a teammate who asked, Russell Westbrook has a lot of these. Jeremy said, bricks, <laughs> bad idea. Then, while watching a Laker game at home, Jeremy tweeted, Why does King James flop so much? Not only questioning his greatness, but his game. So people are looking to blame Sohan. After Pop moved him away from point guard, the problems got worse. Wimby wide open for three, but Sohan, tunnel vision, takes a wild contested fadeaway like discount Michael Jordan. Against the Wolves, literally looks at Wimby, but misses the handoff for a stupid foul. When he does pass, it's a lazy off-target turnover. But if Wimby's teammates never pass to him, lazy off-target turnover. But if Wimby's teammates never pass to him, 
How does he have 18 points a game? Because they do pass him the ball, but that narrative doesn't get clicks. The truth is Wimby still has a ton to work on. When his shot is falling, dude looks unstoppable. 19-year-old Kevin Durant. But the stats tell a different story. If you compare him to Chet Holmgren, Wimby beats him in counting stats, but Chet is much more efficient. You might think it's because defenses are keyed on Wimby more than Chet, but no. Chet is just a much more developed player right now. He can spot up for three on the outside or create his own shot. Remember the off the backboard to himself dunk oh, yeah, against the pretty. Clippers? Chet is the second yeah, best player the on year. the number three team in the West. He won't win rookie of the year because he's got better teammates than Wimby. He will win because he is a better player right now. I think Wimby and Chet will be super. If you want to know what I was saying before, I was saying, how do you miss a, a, a how do you mess up an entry pass to Wembenyama? You know, a seven four target. It's about as easy as it gets. It's an entry pass. You know, it's not like you're threading the needle. All you got to do is fake it, fake, look look off your defender or something, you know, because that's probably why you were struggling. Your defender knows you're trying to give the ball to your center, so he's just playing the center. You know what I'm saying? So why don't you look him off or make a move, be aggressive, do something, my brother. <laughs> Basically what I was saying. That's stars, just, if they stay healthy, but Chet the grew a lot in that year off last season. You just don't see Chet have these bad games like Wimby because when Wimby's off, it's ugly. Horrible misses like this. He is only hitting 28% from three. But I thought this guy was always open at seven foot four. But he is settling for these jump shots because Wimby gets overpowered by much smaller players. Here, Keegan Murray forces him into a bad jump shot. Or Wimby catches it with Grant Williams guarding him and Kyrie for help. No one under the basket, but he spins out for a fadeaway? This is all normal, by the way. A 19-year-old in his first NBA season. That leads me to believe that some of the, uh, 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 his teammates probably just think he's a little, he, he might not be able to get that bucket, you know? They, they don't all the way believe in him because probably what they're able to do to him like what, what they're able to do against him to him in practice, you know? Like like he just said, he's getting overpowered by smaller guards. They're all smaller than him. They're probably overpowering him as well. So they probably feel like if I could overpower him, you know what I'm saying? He's probably not going to be able to score on this this uh, guard in the paint right now. We're going to pass it to him for nothing. And, and how they looking at it, I know they probably thinking this definitely comes to, into effect. The fact that they're their playoff hopes are basically gone out the window, like, you know what I'm saying? 15 exits exit ago, you know what I'm saying? He probably like, nah, I'm about to go crazy. I'm about to try to go crazy, you know? That's probably another reason why he's not trying to up the ride. He's like, nah, Jeremy trying to get his. He's like, we, we trash anyway. That's how he's thinking about it. Season. And the Spurs are treating him like a superstar, letting him take those shots. In fact, Wimby has by far the highest usage rate of every qualified rookie. It basically shows you how much a guy is involved in games. So the players Wimby actually compares to are gigantic stars. Look at this list. Do people want to be more involved than Jason Tatum or LeBron James? No, all that would do is allow him to miss more shots and create worse habits. Yes, some of the missed entry passes are ugly, but this narrative that his teammates are freezing him out is just false. But that hasn't stopped mm. the trolls. The online hate is so big, even Greg Popovich is responding. We've seen the social media. I mean, it's hard to believe that, you know, in my opinion, bro, I do feel like some of the players don't really believe in Wemby's abilities all the way, you know? And maybe that's for good reason. I'm not saying it's not for good reason. They seen more than we have, for a fact. So, but it's just like, it's, it's, you can see it. There's many plays. It's like, just give it to Wemby. He could dunk that shit right there. He's wide open. Like, it's just, I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know if that narrative is fake. Uh, I ain't buying that.
post that have been critical of the job I've done coaching this young team this season. Those guys have been 100% correct, and we will be searching Twitter and Reddit for a new assistant coach. What Pop is saying is fans only think in the short term. The <laughs> Spurs have a long-term vision. What if people were saying this about Shea Gilgis Alexander after he was traded to OKC? or KD in his rookie year. Durant had a miserable rookie season in Seattle. The Sonics were so bad, they were last in the Western Conference. But did all that losing have an effect on KD? No, he still became one of the best of his generation, but it allowed them to get the number four pick and take Russell Westbrook. Then, bad again, and they got James Harden. Before you knew it, OKC had the building blocks of a dynasty. Of course, that didn't pan out, but for a small market team, the draft. So that's why you're not up in the bracket with me, you know. <laughs> yeah, I try to lose. Like, I understand try to lose, but give give Wemby his in-game experience reps. You know, he needs those. You know what I'm saying? Those are going to be very useful down the line, man. For real. Is critical. So not only are they not ruining <coughs> Wemby, they're setting him up for success. If Pop hired a fan to run the team, they'd trade the young guys for Zach Levine and use cap space on Pascal Siakam. But that's what dumb franchises do. LeBron James barely missed the playoffs his rookie year, but that meant they got a mediocre draft pick. So Cleveland took Luke Jackson at 10 and started making wild free agent moves. They signed guys like Larry Hughes and Delonte West. Pretty soon it was clear. I'm basically seeing this is a high IQ play. You know what I'm saying? Working in the in the NBA system, make sure we get good draft picks, you know. Okay, I'll see what's going on. I'll see what's they going wasted on. LeBron's <coughs> talent and he left for Miami. But the oh. Spurs are building slow, like the Thunder with SGA. Unlike Wimby, OKC got their star in a big trade, but they also got a ton of draft picks. With those, they have hit on guys like Josh Giddy, Jalen Williams, Chet Holmgren, and now Kaysen Wallace. Now, they're one of the best teams in the NBA surrounding SGA with young talent. The Spurs have been stockpiling picks with deals like DeJounte Murray to Atlanta, Derek White to Boston. Wimby is actually just part of a bigger plan that's been going on for years. But a big problem, unlike SGA or young LeBron, is we have never seen hype like this. I mean, Wimby's debut jersey was supposed to get around 80,000 bucks at auction. It sold for almost a million, but a former Spur is actually ruining his prime. The Hawks are shopping DeJounte Murray already 18 months after getting him. And he is linked to two huge teams, but only one of them makes Jeez, sense. That's the end of this joint. Y'all know what to do, man. If y'all enjoyed, click on the last joint, turn on post notifications, like the video, comment, and subscribe. Share the video with your peoples. And I'm out of here, man. Oh, my God.